What's going on, smart people? Today, I just finished my first day of school, first day of grad school. And I've gotta say, it didn't really feel that different yet. We didn't really get into anything much. I guess syllabus day still still applies to grad school. But yeah, I, I don't know why I was expecting like this huge paradigm shift of material. Like it would just be super overwhelming the first day or something. That just wasn't the case. But I had two classes today, mathematical methods for physics and then quantum mechanics. Both courses that I've taken for undergrad. And the first class today was math methods. and. Right off the bat, the professor just had so much energy and he was so enthusiastic about what he was talking. We didn't even talk about certain material yet, it was just going over the syllabus. And you could just tell that he was really excited to be teaching this class. And he was actually one of the professors that I reached out to when I was first applying here. So to get him as a professor and then see that he, he just cares that much and he's just that happy to be teaching it, that's a good sign. Now what was interesting about this class is that it's 400 slash 500 level, which means that there can be some undergrad students sprinkled in there. No the professor wasn't like, raise your hand if you're a grad student, so I'm not sure which one is grad and which ones are undergrad, but that's the case. And the way that he made it sound was that, you know, homework and tests, there might be more questions for the grad students, and the overall way that he grades might be a little bit, or quite a bit less lenient for the grad students. As for the material for this class, well, first let me explain a bit what math methods is. Really, it's, it's one big conglomerate of a bunch of different math classes, but taught by a physicist instead of someone in the math department. And the professors will often cherry pick little sections from specific math classes, that way you can fit more into it. Because some of it's just too general, some you can narrow it down to fit more, uh, more physics, to be more applicable. So let's go over the contents of the course, the contents of math methods. It says that we'll be going over vector algebra and analysis, so that's going to be really your calc 3, your multivariable calculus, your vector calculus, Stokes and divergence theorem, all that good stuff. Uh, Fourier analysis and delta distribution, so analyzing waves or frequencies, how to do that kind of thing. Um, so if you have, say, a whole bunch of signals, uh, you can decompose that signals to pick out the most dominant frequencies. So say, for example, you were to play a chord on the piano, if you, you hear all of those notes at once, but you can dissect it. If you play a C major chord, it sounds like one thing, but you can decompose that into a C, an E, and a G. Get what I'm saying? Uh, next is Green's functions. A professor said that this becomes more important the higher up in physics you go, like with quantum field theory. Like if you, um, if you try to represent something as like an infinite dimensional matrix and you invert that matrix, that, can, that inverted matrix will be written in terms of Green's functions. Um, spherical harmonics, if you guys have had any quantum mechanics, these are the eigenfunctions to the angular momentum operators. Uh, that might be a little bit too much information for what I've been saying so far. Theory of complex functions. Some integrals are really hard to do without a theory of complex analysis, so some almost impossible integrals become absolutely trivial if you incorporate contour integrals, if you start uh, imposing like residue theorems. And last but not least, which I'm actually probably the most excited for, is tensor algebra and analysis. Uh, you, if you guys have seen videos before, you've noticed that I get pretty stoked on some tensor stuff. And I really like how my professor described it. He said, you know, if you picture that there's a bird's nest in the corner of your wall and you impose some coordinate system on describing where it is, you can come up with a whole different, like, as many different coordinate systems as you want that all lead to the same spot. And since they all lead to the same spot, there has to be some connection between them. And he said that there's a difference between the physical object and the way of representing it. And that's where tensors come in. And it's such a simple idea, but can extend to so many more general things. It can be extended to describing how light bends around a black hole and it all starts with such a simple idea of if we can all get the same answer with different coordinate system what is the connection between all of this that's a huge oversimplification sure but to first order approximation that's fine now moving on to my quantum mechanics course, he didn't actually hand out a syllabus, it's available online I think, but I can't be bothered to pull that up. But it's really what you would sort of expect, you start with the basic assumptions and axioms of quantum mechanics and then we build our way up to like the idea of Hilbert spaces, go to the Schrodinger equation in one to multiple dimensions, talk about things like bound states, scattering, uh, then we get into things like angular momentum and spin and there's other things that I'm forgetting. You, you kind of touch over a whole bunch of different 
different stuff in quantum mechanics. But what was funny about it is all we did today was talk about classical mechanics. We went over Newton's and then Lagrange's formalism of classical mechanics and where they shine, and then we got to the derivation of the Euler-Lagrange equation, which was actually good for me because tomorrow I actually have my course in classical mechanics, so it was a nice little refresher, even though I already just made a video on it not too long ago. What's a little scary about that class, but it, it also compensates for itself by making other things more, you know, let me just say it. There's only one exam for my quantum mechanics course, and it's the final exam. I think we have like one or two quizzes, the final exam, and some homework. And I'm not sure how I feel about only having one big exam, but the thing that made me feel much better about it is the fact that 50% of our grade is homework. I think they said, our professor said 20% is, uh, are the two quizzes, and then 30% is the final exam. So it shouldn't be difficult to do well in the class, but I guess those are also the famous last words. But I'm really not too worried about quantum mechanics. One, because I've already taken two courses in it, whereas things like math methods or classical mechanics I've only had one course in. And the other thing is that I've also had it as one of my most recent courses, so it's the most fresh in my mind. And I also feel like I put in a lot of effort to internalize and conceptualize a lot of the things that we learned. I spent so long trying to understand the physical meaning of Klebsch Gordon coefficients. So, I don't see this one being my most difficult course. I have my classical mechanics course tomorrow. I have a sneaking suspicion that that's going to be the one that gets me or the one that I have to that occupies the most of my time, but we'll see how that goes. I'm about to go pick Kelly up from her class. I think tomorrow's video I'm going to talk more about how her classes look and also talk about how my classical mechanics thing went. But anyways, I guess we're calling this season 2 of Andrew Dotson's video. So let me know if you're super stoked for season 2, but really where is season four of Rick and Morty is what I want to know. Uh, then I'll see you guys there. <laughs>